Who's your patron saint? Uh, it's uh, Saint Mary. Oh, how boring, how boring, yes. <laughs> but at least she's female, okay. <laughs> There isn't one. There isn't one. Documentaries are just as fictional as fiction films are. There is no such thing as objectification. You can never be objective. You know, I'm fascinated by historians, and I think all historians are liars. So historians write for money. So already, how are you going to organize that with your moral principles? And they also write for fame. And they're only going to write, you know, it's like they say that history is always, is always written by the winners, not, not the people who lose. So I don't think, I don't think it's possible, you know, to be objective. And I think, you know, most documentary filmmakers are exactly the same. You know, they make their own particular political, moral standpoint when they talk about pigs or talk about Mr. Trump or whatever else. It's always far too subjective. So in a curious way, I make documentary films uh, disguised as fiction films, and I make fiction films disguised as documentaries. Many years ago, I made two films in the same year. One was called Act of God, which was about people being struck by lightning and then surviving. And the other was called Falls, which was about hundreds of people who wanted to become birds. And the strange thing was, the film about birds was completely fiction. But the film about people being struck by lightning was, as far as I could imagine and understand it, it was... Um, about reality. I got people to talk about their experiences. But the audience got it round the wrong way. They thought the film about people being struck by lightning was a fiction, and the film about wishing to be a bird was a fact. So that's to do very much with the perception of audiences. If you want to make films, make films. Don't make... You know, it's a secondary occupation. Just think, you know, Jane Austen, uh, who's the author of um, uh, Harry Potter? You know, these are other people's ideas. And I think we've ended up with a cinema which is more about conductors than composers. Composers have the original idea, and they're the important people. Conductors just simply organize the score. To a certain extent, conductors are important because the orchestra has to be organized, but we should really have, I believe, a original cinema. Okay, that means that uh, the author has to write the own script or has to provide a strategy to put the script together. It doesn't have to be a narrative. But that's the way, you know, that's the way we've organized cinema. You know, all producers want a script because they can understand writing. But by and large, they can't understand pictures. But the cinema is meant to be about pictures, surely. Well, this is so easy a question. In your hand, you have a smartphone. I have a smartphone here. This is the future of the notions of a post-cinematic adventure. And as I said, a couple of hours ago, you know, I can, within 14 seconds, reach my friends in Beijing and Kyoto. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Uh, so that's something we should build on. So I'm interested in making non-narrative, multi-screen, present tense cinema. So my cinema has to be present tense. Because most cinema is past tense. Once you've made a film, it's finished. That's why Casablanca is so boring, because every time you look at it, it's always the same. I can make a film on a Monday, change it for a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 365 days. The technology is now possible. I don't know whether the distribution will be, but it's beginning to be. So present tense cinema, multi-screen, so why should we look just at one picture like she's looking at? We could look at hundreds of pictures at the same time, which is what happens when you walk to this hotel this morning. When you walk down the street, you saw millions of pictures, and they were all changing all the time. And non-narrative, because I don't want to tell you a story. Stories are very boring. We need something more interesting than stories. Stories, if you want to be a writer, Fair enough. You can be another Jane Austen, or you can be another um, Tolstoy, whatever. But stay out there. Stay with words. And words, 
have so many opportunities to perpetuate their meaning. And there are very, very few areas which are just solely about looking. Let's make that cinema as imagistic and as visual as possible. And we have extraordinary technologies. She has an extraordinary object there. And she can point it any which way she wants. That's what we should concentrate on. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So